How's it going my bakers? I hope you're having an awesome day. Welcome back to the channel. Today's episode is all about vitamin C. So let's go to the kitchen and do some experiments. Ascorbic acid, also known as vitamin C, is found in many fruits and vegetables. And if you want to be healthy, you should definitely be getting enough of it. Of course, we all know these fizzy tablets. Drop one in a glass of water, and that's your vitamin dose for the day. In fact, it's kind of an overdose at 1000 milligrams. Real fruit and veg would be always better. But what does it have to do with bread making? It is commonly used in large bread productions, like in bread factories. It's meant to be a dough enhancer or a dough improver. So I got my hands on some pure vitamin C, and I want to find out what exactly it does and how it affects the dough. This stuff is super concentrated. You need very small amounts of it. There is more vitamin C in one teaspoon of this stuff than there is in 100 lemons. But fresh lemon juice is what we're going to compare this to. And we'll find out which one works best and whether you should use them at all. In my opinion, using dough improvers is just like cheating. It doesn't take any skill to put a little pinch of a chemical in your bread dough, right? If we're talking about vitamin C, it is really a pinch. The recommended dose is about 20 to 30 milligrams of vitamin C per one kilo of flour. When it comes to lemon juice, you need a little bit more, of course. 100 grams of lemon juice is about 50 milligrams of vitamin C. In this comparison test, I will be using a slightly larger dose at 40 milligrams per one kilo of flour. I tried using 20 milligrams once and it made no difference. So we will double it up and see what happens. Right, so we're going to make three breads. The first one will be the control. Its ingredients are on the left with only flour, water, yeast and salt. The second one will be made with ascorbic acid. So flour, water, yeast and salt and pure vitamin C. The third one with natural lemon juice. And of course I've adjusted the amount of water for it to compensate. And as ever, this is a comparison video. It's not a recipe video, so I'm not going to be going through all the steps here. I will be talking about how the dough feels and behaves, and we'll talk about the actual function of vitamin C in bread dough, and we'll compare the results in the baked loaves. If you want to see the amounts of ingredients I used, you will find that information in the link in the description. Now right now you see me dissolving the ascorbic acid in the water. This will ensure that it's distributed evenly throughout the dough. All three recipes will be kept in the same order as they were in the beginning. So the basic dough with just flour, water and yeast and salt will be on the left, the one with ascorbic acid will be in the middle and the one with fresh lemon juice will be on the right. They will all go through bulk fermentation with one fold halfway through. They'll get pre-shaped, rested, then final shaped, final proofed and baked. But whilst I'm making these breads, let's just talk about the use of vitamin C and what it actually achieves. Although vitamin C is an antioxidant when we consume it, in bread dough, as you're kneading it, it actually works in the opposite way, by oxidizing the dough. Oxygen is needed for gluten development. So oxidizing the dough technically speeds up gluten development. And that poses an advantage for bread factories. There is one issue with oxidization though. It can make the flour lose its flavor. But gluten strength does have some benefits. Because the dough is stronger, it can take more fermentation. And of course, if you can ferment it for longer, you can get more flavor out of it. Since the gluten is strengthened, it can trap more gas inside you can achieve greater volume in your loaves. Another effect that vitamin C has is that it makes the crumb of the loaf tighter and finer. And this is a result of the increased gluten strength too. So instead of having larger bubbles in a crumb, a dough made with vitamin C will have a more closely packed crumb with smaller bubbles. It's worth noting that the same can be achieved by using a little bit of fat in the dough. But adding fat actually has the opposite effect on gluten, it actually weakens it. Still, it results in a soft crumb, which is more tightly packed and it makes the dough expand more as it's baking. And that's one good alternative to using vitamin C. In a factory, of course it's cheaper to use ascorbic acid. As home bakers, we can just use some fat. I have also read that vitamin C is supposed to increase fermentation rate. Now first of all, that is actually not something you want to do when you're making bread. A slower fermentation will always give you a better result, as it develops more flavor. Saying that, as you can see, the dough with no vitamin C appears to be fermenting most rapidly. But it may just be the case of it expanding more easily, because that dough is looser. One thing that really stood out is that the two doughs that contain vitamin C were a lot less sticky than the one that didn't. And that is because they are stronger. A little bit of stickiness, of course, is not a valid reason for adding enhancers to your dough. I have read that another reason for using vitamin C is to make the dough more acidic. An acidic environment is not great for mold formation. So technically, it should prevent your bread from molding. And that's of course another good reason for a bread factory to use it. I mean, if you even can call that bread, that stuff stays soft for two weeks. I don't believe I've ever had my bread go moldy. That is a bread that I baked myself. If you do have those kind of issues, maybe you live in a humid climate, then I have a couple of other options for you. 
Instead of using vitamin C, use a pre-ferment, or use a sourdough starter, or just lower the amount of yeast and ferment the whole dough for many more hours. This will make it more acidic and less favorable for yeast growth, and it's achieved by a totally natural process. I guess I have covered most of the effects that vitamin C has on bread dough. It oxidizes the dough as it's being needed, developing gluten faster and making it stronger. It can help your bread trap more fermentation gases and rise higher, gaining greater volume. It can result in a soft and fine crumb, and it may even work as a preservative, preventing mold growth. I've given you good alternatives, because I believe vitamin C is not really necessary for the home bake anyway. And if you really want to use it, well perhaps stick to lemon juice, but we'll see if it works or not in a minute. Let's just get back to the numbers real quick and how to use it. 20 or 40 milligrams per 1 kilo of flour. That is a ridiculously small amount, and you would need special scales to even weigh that. It's a lot easier with lemon juice, since we know that 100 grams of lemon juice has approximately 50 milligrams of vitamin C. You saw in the beginning I had the vitamin C tablets. I have read that people use them sometimes in bread making, which seems a little bit strange. Normally they are flavored and they contain other ingredients than just vitamin C, so I would just stay away from that. Of course oranges are also high in vitamin C, but they also have a very distinct flavor, which would be quite noticeable in a lean dough like this. So again, if you really want to use vitamin C, just use lemon juice. Well, let's get back to these breads for a second. The first one to go in the oven was the plain dough with no vitamin C. It had risen to its full potential, and if I had left it for a little bit longer, it would have started spilling over the tin. The two doughs with the ascorbic acid, however, they rise more vertically. They held their shape a lot better, and because they were stronger, they could be left to ferment for longer. Here we have the results. They are still in the same order, and from the top down, they look quite similar. We'll leave these to cool down completely, then cut them open and see what they look like inside. By the way, if you find these videos interesting, check out the principles of baking playlist for more. I've tested quite a few different ingredients there. Okay, so let's see what we got. Clearly, there are some big differences here, and they appear to be exactly how I described them earlier. The dough with no additives has a more open and uneven crumb. The two with the vitamin C have much greater volume, but the crumb is tighter, with smaller bubbles which are more tightly packed. It's nice and soft and supple. It does appear that the bread in the middle has a slightly whiter crumb. Perhaps it is the oxidizing effect of the vitamin C. I was quite pleasantly surprised with the effect that the lemon juice had. It seems to have worked exactly the same as the pure ascorbic acid. And that's great, because if you really want to use it, then you can just use fresh lemon juice. It's not a specialist ingredient, and it's always available in the supermarket, and it's completely natural. But I can hear a couple of people saying, but Charlie, I don't want my bread to taste of lemons. So let's give them a taste, and see if it's noticeable or not. I can tell you that even comparing them side by side, it was very hard to tell the difference. The one in the middle with the ascorbic acid, to me it did not taste any different from the first one. The one with the lemon juice had a slight acidity, but did not taste of lemons. By the way, adding lemon juice to your bread will not give you any health benefits. Heat treatment of vitamin C pretty much kills it. So what do you think of this dough improver? Have you ever used it before? And why? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one, click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. But that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one.